Hi, I'm Sadma Benawen, and in this video, I'm going to be showing task one and task two of the pre-release material implemented in flowchart. So as we all know, task one is the start of the day. We're going to show the initializations and show an implementation of a for loop in flowchart. Here are our initializations. They're done in square rectangle, like a straight rectangle. We have count equals zero. We have our train up times, train up tickets, trains up money, trains down times, trains down tickets, and trains down money. After that, we're going to print all the data that's located at index zero. So all the data that's related to nine o'clock, 10 o'clock trains. Then we have a decision diamond. Is count equal to three? No, it's not. So increment the counter. Counter equals count plus one. Now we're going to print all the data located at index one. So all the data regarding train, the 11 o'clock train and the 12 o'clock train. Again, decision is count equal to three. No, increment the counter. Print the data located at the at index two, which is the third index pertaining to the 13 o'clock train and the 14 o'clock train. Is count equal to three? No, increment the counter. So now count is equal to three. Print the data that's pertaining to pertaining to the trains at the third index, so 15 o'clock train and 16 o'clock train, is count equal to three? Yes, it is. That's the end of task one in flowchart. Here's the start of task two. We're going to initialize ticket cost to 25.00, and selling tickets is our flag. It's initialized to yes. Now we're going to put the flowchart symbols for inputting time up and validating time up. So we're going to print a message. What time do you want to go up? 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 13 o'clock, or 15 o'clock, and input the time. Then we have a decision box for validation. Is time up not equal to 9 and not equal to 11 and not equal to 13 and not equal to 15? So if this is yes, we have an error message. And after that error message, again, we print what time do you want to go up? 9, 11, 13, 15, input the time up, again, validate. Now let's say they did put, you know, time up is equal to nine. So we're going to go to index up is equal to trains up times dot index of time up. So that's a quick way to get index up. Now we have the flow chart symbols for getting the time down. So we're going to print a message. What time do you want to go down? 10, 12, 14, or 16. Input time down. Then we have a decision box. Is time down not equal to 10 and time down not equal to 12 and time down not equal to 14 and time down not equal to 16 and time down less or, sorry, or time down less than time up? If it's yes, we're going to print an error message and ask them to input the time down again. If the answer is no, we're going to extract index down. Now follow that little yellow arrow so we can put input the number of tickets. So we're going to print a message. How many tickets would you like? Input number of tickets. We have a decision box or decision diamond to validate the number of tickets. Is number of tickets greater than 80 or number of tickets greater than trains up tickets of index up or number of tickets greater than trains down tickets of index down? If it's yes, then the user is asking for too many tickets and we you know, we can't do that. So we're going to put an error message. And again, it's a loop, a validation loop, and it will ask them again, how many tickets would you like? If the answer to that decision box is no, we're going to calculate the cost for one way. So the cost, total cost one way is equal to the ticket cost, which was 25.00, multiplied by the number of tickets they asked for minus the integer division of the number of tickets divided by 10. So you can take account that discount one free ticket for every 10 tickets. After that, we have a parallelogram which will print you need to pay and print the total cost one way multiplied by two so that they know that this is the total cost to go up and down the mountain. Now we have, you know, trains up tickets of index up is equal to trains up tickets of index up minus the number of tickets. So we've updated the number of tickets available and we can also show on the screen closed if there's only zero tickets left. So if trains up tickets of index up is equal to zero, then trains up tickets of index up is equal to closed. Ideally, that could be done in the decision box, but because I don't have much space on this slide, so I've just put it together. You know, these are the updates of the train station table. So how the train station table is going to look after the user has purchased their tickets. Once you've finished you know, updating those two arrays, the trains up tickets 
array and the trains down tickets an array and of course the trains up money array and the trains down money array it's time to show the what's stored in the arrays so print trains up times trains up tickets trains down times trains down tickets ideally this should also be done the same way that was done in task one so it should be like a for loop with a counter and checking if the counter has reached three but also because we don't have space i haven't done it here and so this is where i recommend that you write you know your pre-release material in python code or in pseudocode because it's kind of easier there's so many for loops so it's really difficult you know you need a for loop to be able to show all the times and all the tickets left and all the money left so let's finish the implementation we're going to print a message asking would you sh would you like to continue selling tickets yes or no and input selling tickets is selling tickets equal to so is it equal to yes if they didn't type yes so if it's not equal to yes they typed anything else of so no then we go to the right which is the end of task two if selling tickets is in fact equal to yes so the train station person cashier typed yes we're going to continue selling tickets we're going to follow that green arrow which will take us back to be able to input the new time up and the new time down and the new number of tickets for the next person who's buying so that's the end of task two. I hope this was useful. Thank you very much for watching. I'd love to see your comments. Have a great day. Bye-bye.